Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and a warm, warm welcome if you are new. My name is Desiree and on my channel you will typically find a lot of grocery hauls, coupon deals, money saving tips, and just mom life stuff. Today is a different category of mom life stuff. This is a medical mama video, okay? So my son was born with MPS1 Hurler syndrome. He got it at the time of conception from a genetic mutation that my husband and I both share. So I'll just say that he had a really rough start at life. And um, he got a bone marrow transplant. And well, before the bone marrow transplant, he had to go through three rounds of chemo. I talk more about his diag um, him being diagnosed and his treatment in a video I posted last year. I will link that video below if you're new and haven't seen that. But that just talks more about him, about his story, about my little superhero. So yeah, if you're interested, check that out. But if you are new and you just searched for a video like this, first of all, I wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry that you are going through this really rough time right now. I've been there and I'm wanting to post more videos like this to, to help out. When I decided to make YouTube videos, I knew that this was something that I needed to post. No, it's not fun. No, it's not attention getting. Um, I honestly hope this video gets like no views, which means that all is good. But like our genetic doctors told us um, in the beginning when he was diagnosed, we wish we can wave that little fairy wand and make all children diseases, cancers, just go away, but we can't. Um, but there are ways to prepare a little better and just get ready for a, a little bit of a rough road ahead. So yeah, first of all, I wanted to say that. And this is not to um, gain sympathy. I just want to raise awareness. May 15th is MPS1 Awareness Day. So I wanted to post this for that. And um, I just hope to do more videos like this to help in the future. So, like I said, my name is Desiree. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can with any questions you may have. So, today's video, I'm sorry, that was a really long written intro, but this video is five ways, or five things really. These are all things that you can bring to the hospital with you when your child is expected to be there for a while. It's for an extended pediatric hospital stay. So yeah, let's just get started, okay? So number one is the right clothes. So I'll talk about children first and then I'll go to the parents. So for children, I'm, and also because my son was an infant, I know a lot of this will be more for an infant care versus an older child, but I'll try to do both, okay? So for my infant, the best type of clothing was um, snap-up onesies. That way, because typically a child who's going to be in the hospital for an extended stay will have some kind of port. Um, my son had two CBC lines right in his chest. So a snap-up onesie was great because then the lines can come out so that if they're napping, which children in a hospital will try to rest at least a lot of the time, um, so that way the um, nurses had, and you, had access to the line so that they can connect um, meds to it and take labs and stuff um, via the lines that was just outside of their clothes. So they weren't having to adjust and take off and put on, um, you know, different clothes. Um, it, for babies especially, because there is a dressing on like CBC lines, which is what my son had, um, they like to like, I mean, it's a... It's, it's covered by a tegaderm. So it's like a big sticker, big band-aid, whatever you want to call it, and they like to mess with it. So w clothes was a good way to stop it, but still having the lines out for easy access. Um, I'm looking at notes behind there. That's why I keep staring in that direction. Um, so a snap-up onesie is great. I would also say to bring a couple of cute outfits for pictures. I know cute really you're in a hospital but honestly you're going to want to um this is something that i didn't bring for my son i brought him a bunch of like more used 
ratty clothes. I left the nice stuff at home, but I really should have brought a couple of nice outfits. I ended up buying some from the hospital just to take pictures in with some downtime and just something to remember because at that time, you're not going to want to take a lot of pictures, but I'm telling you, you should. You should take pictures that way five years from then. You can look back and say, look at what you've gone through and you got to wear the cute outfit, which yeah, I know, sounds silly. Now in a hospital, especially for the little ones and for little older kids, they will be able to provide you diapers or pull-ups depending on the size. Um, and they do have gowns for use, but like I said, especially a child, you'll still want to dress them up to be cute. So I always ask for a couple of gowns to have on hand for the rough days when there's like vomiting, etc um, going on but on the okay days I would dress him up really cute and stuff. okay now going over to adults a lot of comfy clothes okay parents um, guardians whoever is going to be in the hospital room with the child um, sweatpants sweatshirts I know a lot of people get cold in the hospitals because they are they do keep them um, pretty cool with for the doctors or nurses just running around constantly. So a lot of people choose to wear sweats and sweatpants. Um, I'd say nice-ish pajamas. Um, I did bring some jeans and I maybe wore one pair every once in a while. So yeah, leave your really nice stuff at home. Um, you'll have to deal with some um, sick kids. So you're not gonna wanna get that on you. I brought maybe one nice outfit because I knew that we would be taking family pictures with um, a, a business that would stop by and do them for free. So I did have one nice outfit, but yeah, just count on bringing comfortable clothes. As for me, I was breastfeeding, so I was hot all the time. So a lot of comfy, easy access um, t-shirts helped me a lot. Okay, so number two is comfort items for your stay and this could be something as simple as if you use chapstick lotion regularly bring those things from home um, a lot of hospitals will have um, like care bags but sometimes it's just nice to have your own specific lotion and stuff that you like um, <clears throat> other things that are helpful especially for hygiene is good toilet paper my mother-in-law brought good toilet paper because I mean, you're staying at a hospital 24 seven, that toilet paper is junk. <laughs> um, also, I know I've heard of some people bringing their own towel. I just use theirs. That way I just tossed it in their linen. Um, it was just easier for me. So um, yeah, bring your own towel, like a warm towel, warm robe, whatever makes you comfortable. Essential oils for relaxation help too. And a lot of comfort items for sleep. I know I've heard of some people saying ear plugs, eye masks, we had a mattress pad, which I know some hospitals won't allow this because you can't really wash a lot of mattress pads. Um, our hospital actually sold them there and yeah, they said it was okay. So we use the mattress pad because that pullout couch, <clears throat> sorry, excuse my voice, I just woke up, but my the pullout couch is terrible. Um, so a mattress pad did help. So. Um, but maybe try to find a washable one or just check with your doctors to see if that was okay to bring in and your own pillow they have hospital pillows which you know they're like flat and again junky so if you are happier with your own pillow and will help you with sleep in a noisy cold <laughs> hospital room um, bring that so that's the th um, things for comfort items number three this is something that helped a lot with um, money. I brought my own food. Hospital food can be expensive, quite bland, and yeah, it just adds up really quickly. We did take out slash delivery once in a while as a treat, but that gets really expensive really fast. I chose to keep non-perishables in the vehicle I drove up in. I know not everyone um, has a vehicle at the hospital, but a lot of hospitals um, have a parent lounge on the like oncology floor, which is where we were, um, where we had a cubby that I can store non-perishables in. And there was a fridge that you could keep, you know, a few drinks and food items in. So I bought things like Easy Mac, uh, Madras lentils, like the packages from Costco, uh, microwaved brown rice, canned soup, um, 
energy bars, stuff like that, ramen noodles, things that were easy and quick to warm up, especially if your child was having a rough day, but you as parents need to take care of yourself as well. You need to sleep, which is what number two was, <laughs> and you need to eat. You need to take care of yourself. You need to be healthy in order to um, keep your children healthy, to make them feel better. So things like that really helped. A lot of times I try to do an every other day type schedule. So one day I'd be eating Easy Mac and beans and rice. And then the next day I would get a hospital meal just to change things up, just to try to keep a balanced diet and um, money in check. Number four is toys. Now toys are not needed because most pediatric hospitals have a whole toy room. They have a whole care department and um, where they have things ranging from things from infants for like chewy toys, um, like teethers up to iPads for teenagers and the younger kids too. So you don't really need to bring toys. So if you're traveling far, don't obviously don't worry too much about it. But um, for me, I liked having a few special items that we can wash and sanitize very easily. For a baby specifically, I would say to bring a baby mobile. I will try to link one below. If I can't find one, I will say I'm sorry I couldn't find one, but my son did have one that would clip onto like anything. It would clip onto his car seat if we wanted to, and it clipped onto the hospital bed, which was nice, and it was um, we were able to clean it and stuff. The reason why I say that is because a lot of pediatric hospitals are still getting used to or um, having babies there, um, I guess other than a NICU, I'm talking more about like the oncology floor. So I'm not sure about a NICU, but um, a mobile would be good because a lot of, well, the hospital we were at, they were all taken. There was maybe three mobiles and they were all being used. So it was nice that we brought our own um, and I hope to buy a bunch in the future and be able to donate. That's a future goal of mine. Um, and as for older kids, their own tablet, fully loaded <laughs> with all the games and everything else they need, apps they like, movies, um, they'll be in bed in their own room for a very long time. So anything that will keep their spirits high, coloring books for the kids who like crafts and stuff. But yeah, those things would be great if you brought your own, but it's not it's not as important as like the special clothing and comfort items, but I just thought it was worth mentioning. And number five, last but not least, is entertainment for yourself. I know this, they kind of go together, toys, entertainment, but your phone, tablet, and TV get old really quickly. So I would say bring a grown-up coloring book for yourself, crossword puzzles, sudoku, crochet items, if you are good with things like that, just to pass the time. Um, your child should be or you will want your child to rest a lot of the time so um waiting for those hosp um not hospital waiting for those doctor's visits nurse checks um you'll be up a lot so bring some things for yourself to keep you occupied um, we were in an isolation room so we really tried to stay in there as much as possible which um it gets pretty hard. It gets pretty lonesome. So those are my five tips of things to bring. One thing I want to mention is probably the most thing, the important thing is try your hardest to find someone um, to help you while your child is in this hospital stay. I know a lot, usually it's a, a father, mother, whatever, um, whoever, you know, parent, but think about grandparents, aunts and uncles, um, best friends, someone in the area that you can count on that can stay illness free because you, you don't want to bring even be bringing a cold into the hospital. So someone you can trust that you can bring in for times that are really rough, that you need the physical support, you need someone there. So think really hard about that, especially for you single moms and dads. Um, yeah, find someone that you can put on that contact list to come in for the really rough times and times that you need a break. Because if you start losing your mind, your kids will start losing their mind and they'll just be a whole other thing. So yeah, 
Those are the things that you really need to think about, gather together before this hospital stay. And like I said earlier, I am so sorry um, if you're going through this. I wish it upon nobody. And yeah, I really hope this video was somewhat helpful. If you have tips on your own, um, of your own, <laughs> please let me know below. I'm sorry about my frog in my throat. But yeah, I really hope this video helped anybody out there. And I pray that your child and your family find rest in this situation. And yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful and blessed day.